Welcome, I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on mysterious and weird true stories, from glitches to the paranormal. This is my weekly compilation, ending on Monday, November 1st, 2021. Case file number 360, written by Wretched and Divine. Two laundry lines appeared from nowhere. I do the laundry every week. I take care of every step, collecting the clothes, loading the washer, starting the washer, unloading it, and hanging the clothes up to dry. I've been living in the same apartment for over a year now, and have been consistently the only one doing laundry for as long as I've been here. I hang the clothes on a line out in the balcony, where I meticulously make sure that no pieces are overlapping, and each piece has the amount of pins needed to hold it in place. I've always complained about how small the space is for hanging the clothes, since we only had three lines to hang our clothes on, and a week's worth of laundry every time. Well, it's like whoever controls the simulation heard that, as just last week I found two extra lines. I stood there for a second, wondering if I was in a dream or if I was sick or something. The lines were even colored as opposed to the other three, which are completely white. They even seemed newer and were tighter. I am still completely baffled as to how they got there. I asked the person who lives with me if they had anything to do with it, and they told me those lines had always been there. I have never been on any kind of medications or anything that would make me hallucinate without them not being there, and I've never had hallucinations of any type except the occasional sleep paralysis. I'm 100% certain they were not there before. Edit. To those wondering if maybe my roommate was responsible for adding the extra lines, I'm sure they were not, for multiple reasons. One, they wouldn't lie about not installing them. Two, it's not possible for them to install them without some sort of extender as a large part of the lines are in an unreachable place. We do not own any sort of extenders, or even ropes for that matter. 3. They aren't the type to do spontaneous nice things or do things without being asked. 4. They are not pranksters either and wouldn't do this to mess with me. Bonus file, written by Free Cicada 502 Stories continuing her supernatural madhouse. Some people have suggested demons. I read a story here about this guy whose friend's house was haunted by a demon who hated him, and the thing was attached to all the negativity, and I feel like that might be what's happening here, or at least in my house. The night I posted, while I was getting ready for bed, I heard a male voice yelling my name from my backyard while I was in the bathroom. I just ignored it. I didn't even bother to check if someone was really there. This was around 9pm. On October 2 at 11.30pm, I smelled my great grandma's perfume in my bathroom three times while I was there. It wasn't three separate occasions. I never left the bathroom. I know what she smells like. I have three of her brooches that she left me after she died and I can't wear them because they smell like her. She has a distinctive smell and nothing in our house except for her things smell like it, much less our bathroom. We do have an air freshener in there that's on a timer, but the scent in it was rose and is wildly different from how Nanny smells. I left the bathroom crying because it felt so real, and it was like she was in the room with me. And the weird thing is that after she died, I kept thinking about what if she's haunting us? She died like three years ago, and I had no reason to think that, but I couldn't get it out of my head. On October 11, I smelled it again, and I kind of yelled at her. I was saying how all the rooms in the house were haunted. Why would you pick the bathroom? And how we weren't very close, so why are you haunting me instead of my mom? and I apologized immediately after because I felt like I was a bit rude. I haven't smelled it since, so I'm hoping that's over. On October 14th at 7am, I was playing in the kitchen with my cat Ivy while sitting on the floor in front of the dining room table. We have an umbrella open in the front of the litter box to prevent our dogs from going in there, and the umbrella moved. I don't know what made it move, but it wasn't my cat's. On October 15th at 6.40am, I was leaning up against a counter in the kitchen so that Katniss would rub against my back. She had turned around and was walking towards me, and she jerked her head around like someone grabbed her tail and jumped down and ran under the dining room table. I've been having a hard time sleeping ever since my mom heard the voice. I keep randomly waking up and falling asleep. This has happened several days in a row. I'm a heavy sleeper. I've stepped through a hurricane and the only thing that woke me up was the power going out because of how hot my room got. I have no idea what's causing me to wake up. I'm not under any stress and I'm usually exhausted by the time I get into bed. Any ideas? For everyone suggesting carbon monoxide poisoning, the only thing I can think of that could be leaking is our oven. 
It's older than me and shares a wall with my bed. But if it is leaking, my mom should be more affected. She's the one that cooks and spends the longest time in the kitchen. She's not having trouble with her memory. Our cats also love the kitchen and like to lay in the window across from the stove. They haven't been acting strange. As for suggestions to set up a camera, we have a small camera that my dad bought a while ago, but we don't have a computer to actually check the footage. I was going to try to record myself sleeping with my phone on an app, but it picks up the AC in my room. Sorry, but I live in the south. I'm not sleeping without it until it gets colder. My dad is quite abusive to me physically. He was abused when he was a kid. He has complete control over the finances, so I'm unable to get a job and so is my mom. We're trying to figure out a way to get away from him, but I don't know if we ever will. For context, my house is a one-story brick house that's on a huge hill. Our driveway isn't level and the emergency brake has to be on all the time in my mom's car. The back of the house, aka my room, the bathroom, the office, and part of my parents' room is around three stories high. My parents' room is at the corner of the house, so one window is very low to the front yard while the other one is really high. This is why I said it's really hard to break into my house. Not only that, but because my mom doesn't work, she's home 24-7. We also have a streetlight on the corner of our yard near the room. I feel very safe from outside threats. One night, me and my sister were watching a VHS movie in my parents' room. They have a giant box TV in there, so we often watched movies. I was sitting on my mom's side of the bed, near the tall window, while Tori was sitting on the other side near the low window. I want to emphasize how freaking tall that window is. I heard a metal on metal noise that's one of the sounds I can't stand, so I turned to look for the source and I noticed that the screen in the tall window has been cut. A perfect horizontal cut was now in it. I screamed and we ran out of there. My parents went to check outside and found nothing. No footprints in the dirt, no ladders had been moved, no weird cars on the street, absolutely nothing. I found out recently that they never replaced the screen because Katniss had been sitting on the windowsill and I went to pet her and noticed it. I flipped out on my mom and she said it was pointless to fix. Weird little noises always happen in the bathroom. We used to have this muted, pink colored plastic trash can in there before we remodeled. It didn't matter what time you took a shower, around 5 minutes in, you would hear something tap on it. It was a very hollow noise. I don't know how to describe it, but I knew it was a trash can. I tried to rationalize it, thinking that maybe the heat caused the plastic to warp, making the noise, but it even happened to my dad who takes pretty cold showers. It happened to my friends too when they stayed the night. I always had to warn them about it. Anyways, this is the one experience that my sister can remember. She had been taking a shower and we all heard this loud ass noise. My mom goes to check on her and Tori literally falls into the wall, like the wall was caved in. We just assumed she had slipped and moved on. But later that night, she told me something pushed her. The hole isn't there anymore. It had been for years, but it was fixed when we remodeled. There was a plastic bag literally duct taped to it to prevent the wires in the wall from getting wet. The wall she fell into was connected to the office wall. I don't know if the thing knew that and wanted to mess with the power or maybe even electrocute Tori, but it was creepy. I would like you all to remember that it is not possible for my family to move. The last thing that often happened in the bathroom were the shadows, so the tub is right behind the door. So when you open the door, it's right up against the shower curtain, but there's like a small wall directly behind the door, so it goes a bit of wall and then the rest is a curtain for the shower, and then you reach the other wall if that makes sense. So when you're in the shower, you're facing with your back to the door, essentially. When someone walks into the bathroom while you're in the shower, you can see the shadow of the door opening, someone walking in, and then the door closing. But the problem is that sometimes when I'm taking a shower, I can see the shadow of the door opening and something walks in. I peek from behind the curtain, but the door is always shut and nothing is in there. I would say it's my imagination, but I've heard my mom call for me asking me why I'm in the bathroom, so I know it happens to other people. This is kind of connected to the bathroom. The bathroom doorway is parallel to the living room doorway. There's a hallway in between where my room, my parents' room, and the office are. There's a painting that my great grandpa did that's in front of the doorway that's framed so there's glass protecting it. Because there's a window right in front of the bathroom door in the bathroom, you can often see your reflection in the glass. Sometimes I see a figure that's taller than me in it. I know it's not me because my head only reaches a certain point in the painting, but the shadow reaches a bit higher. For anyone who might ask, no, the thing isn't Opa. 
He's been dead for a long time. Longer than I've been alive. The only one in the house that knew him was my mom, and Opa loved her. From what I hear, he was a really sweet man who loved his family. His wife Nanny never remarried, and never moved houses until she died a few years ago, and I smell her perfume sometimes. Okay, now for the woods. I'm not even going to try to explain where this takes place in the neighborhood, because this is already quite long. Me and my friend Destiny had been walking around selling those world's finest chocolate bars. First of all, this creepy woman wanted us to come into her house, so that was just weird on its own. We had been walking and noticed this, like, marker on the ground? Like it was a piece of wood with this orange fluorescent plastic tied to it, so of course we had to check it out. It marked this little trail. We walked down it a bit and started hearing running water like a stream. This ties into another experience, so keep this in mind. We could also hear voices like kind of singing, but we could tell they were working to cut trees. No cutting trees down, but you could tell they were cutting wood. At first I thought there may be a factory or something nearby, because of all the noise, so when I got home, I googled the area and there's literally nothing in that area. No water, no factories, just houses. Years later, I actually fell down that trail while on my bike and sprained my thumb and got a minor concussion. So that's fun. We had been looking for that trail again, but somebody got rid of the marker. I guess it's plausible that workers were maybe clearing that area, but I don't know. So, three more experiences. Two happened with my friend Kaylee, both around the same time. We had been in a tent in her backyard. Something was messing with us and was poking at the roof of the tent. Her parents weren't doing it. We freaked out and went inside. Next one happened across the street from her house. Her house was in a little roundabout if you will. There was a straight road and on either side were loops of road where houses were located. Hers was on the wrong side of the road, so if you were driving to my house from her house, her loop would be on the right side. My house was also on the right side of the street so the woods connected from behind her house around the back of the loop to the back of my house. Basically, I could jump my back fence and walk to her backyard if I wanted to. My dog Amber loves to jump the fence and always brings back bones. Nice, right? Can't remember why, but we decided to walk into the woods across from her house. We noticed this little boy who was like maybe five. He was white and had blonde hair. Nothing too memorable. He starts leading us through the woods and for some dumbass reason we decide to follow. We notice several trees with red strings tied around them, like someone was trying to mark the way. We saw some creepy graffiti, but can't remember what it said. There was an abandoned car where the roof was smashed down. We eventually found this river, very shallow and slow moving. Suddenly we realized how thirsty we were, so we stopped at the stream and drank a little, but the boy got his feet stuck. We decided to walk the rest of the way to my house to get help. By the way, not once did the kid speak. Like he straight up never opened his mouth. When he got stuck, he just admitted defeat and just stared off into space. Me and Kaylee are walking and we end up at this drop down. The ground just kind of stopped and dropped down further, like maybe 12 feet. There was a tree that was kind of like a bridge down, so we slowly started climbing it, but we heard yelling from behind us. Her dad, Jason, had found us and was yelling at us wondering why we had been gone for so long. We hadn't spoken to each other this whole time, it was kind of like we were in a trance. We both told him about the kid and how we were trying to get help for him, and he said he didn't see anyone. We walked back to the house and it felt like it took maybe 5 minutes to leave the woods. We never saw the stream, the car, the graffiti, not even the strings. Turns out we had been gone for 5 hours. Last one was with Destiny again. Years before Kaylee moved here, her house is past Kaylee's and is on a massive hill. You walk down the hill and there's two ways you can go, either left to a dead end roundabout where her house is, or right where you can turn left and eventually end up where the weird trail is. The woods near my house connect to her backyard as well, so growing up, me and Destiny were best friends. Might as well be sisters. We love playing outside, especially in the woods. This random tidbit happened just near the woods. There's this weird plant that looks like a feather duster, but has long thin leaves. We love breaking off the fluffy bits and playing with them, so we were picking which ones we wanted and I was pushed backwards by something. I reached out and grabbed the leaves to stop myself from falling on the road and apparently those leaves are sharp as hell. I sliced up my hands. Several times we had been playing basketball in their driveway and because it was a slight hill, if the ball rolled away, it could roll all the way into the woods across the street. 
We've had the ball thrown back to us with quite a bit of force from the woods with no one there. At one point, we found this tree that we absolutely loved to climb behind her house, but there was one drawback. Sometimes in the distant mountains, you could see a little white house with smoke coming from the chimney. Doesn't matter what time of year it is, if you see it, there will be smoke. It would randomly appear and disappear, but the vibes it gave off were so unnerving. It felt like hundreds of eyes were on you and made you feel so anxious. Anytime we saw it, we just went straight back inside. Something I forgot to add in the original post is that sometimes in the attic, light turns on. Because of the house position to the sun, at night the bathroom and hallway gets really dark. Like I've walked into the bathroom door several times because I didn't realize it was closed. The attic door is on the ceiling of our hallway and I can see the light from it sometimes. We only go up there twice a year and the light has a string you have to pull. That's about it other than just crazy neighbors and small things. Again, I'm not really looking for tips, I just wanted to share this. I'll let you know if anything else happens, but for now, I'm just going to basically ignore it all. I know it sounds like a lot, but this is all over the span of 19, almost 20 years. It's not really scary, just obnoxious at this point. Update. Right now, it's 6.30am and I think I may have messed up by talking about this. My room feels so loud right now. I don't know how to describe it, but all around my room is just noise, just outside the walls. It sounds like maybe really distant talking. I thought maybe I was hearing things, but I keep hearing it. My heart is beating so fast right now, and I'm honestly panicking while writing this. I keep hearing scratching noises coming from my ceiling. The sun isn't up yet, but as soon as it is, I think I'll feel better. Okay, well, now it kind of sounds like music. From my hallway, my mom's asleep and never plays music. This is freaking me out, but I guess I'll let you all know if things change. I just tried to record it, but don't hear anything but my fan and AC, so maybe I'm just hearing things. I hope so. Case Notes Okay, so this is just a quick theory that I have. While reading this, it struck me that so many of these anomalies and maybe hauntings, they could be explained by manifestations from other parallel universes that somehow bleed over. So like lights turning on in your attic, maybe in another universe that's slightly bleeding over into yours, someone opened the lights. Or maybe sometimes when you're pushed, it's because in another parallel universe someone is in that exact location and you're forced out of the way. This strikes me less as a haunting and more as anomalies manifesting. That one basketball that was thrown back from the woods? Uh -huh, that's weird. Although that particular one could be explained by some random passerby just throwing it back. And maybe everything else is just extraversal anomalies. Hmm. Case file number 361, written by, it isn't a phase, mom. Who knows, maybe she became Wolverine. I fully understand that this is a dumb thing to freak out about, and honestly, I shouldn't worry about it. Maybe me and my husband didn't get enough sleep. Maybe it somehow healed fast. I don't know. But anyway, here's what happened. Today I went into work with my husband, as we both work at the same store. After a few minutes of walking around, I realized that my foot was tender between two of my toes. Since we have spiders where we live, I decided to check it out in case I was bitten, which happens more than I'd like to think about. I pulled my sock off and immediately noticed an inch and a half long cut starting between two of my toes and going down the top of my foot. We have a puppy, so no big deal, whatever. My husband happened to look over when I was doing this and mentioned that yeah, the puppy was a bit crazy last night or something of that sort. It had a thick scab on it already, so that would make sense. I don't think about this for the rest of the day. It didn't bother me much and it wasn't a bite, so I didn't really care. Fast forward to when we both get home, probably 5 or 6 hours after the whole foot examination took place, and I'm getting ready for bed. I took my socks off and as I did so, I noticed something. No cut, no scab, no redness, no evidence of any cut. I know this seems like no big deal, but this was a sizable cut I had. The scab had been extremely noticeable before, but now there was absolutely no sign of any injury. I even asked my husband, and he was just as freaked out as I was. He immediately confirmed that there was no way it could have completely disappeared that fast. If this helps his credibility at all, he was an EMT for a while. I just feel really strange about this because we both saw it and now there isn't any kind of redness or marks. 
I know this seems like an exaggeration or something, and it isn't even that big of a deal, but I genuinely think something unexplainable has happened. Case notes. So, spontaneous regeneration. This is a new one. I wonder if it is a glitch, or maybe you somehow possess enhanced healing powers. There are always anomalies in the human race. We have so much genetic variance. There are people who are much stronger than others, even at the same body mass. There are other people who are smarter. Is it that impossible that someone would have healing powers to this degree? Maybe. If it's not that, then quantum immortality is always a consideration. You don't have a cut in this reality because you switched over. Although if that is the case, what caused you to switch over? It sounds like it was just an ordinary day. Case file number 362, written by L. Tongs. When the universe pulls a switcheroo on your favorite knife. I have this one knife that I've had for probably 8 years. It's my favorite knife. I use it for everything and take good care of it. At the end of last week, I was washing the dishes, including said knife. I put it away in the place I always do and went to visit my parents for the weekend. I came back Saturday and my knife is gone. I looked everywhere. In my room, all of the cupboards, literally every place I could think of even though I knew where I left it after washing. What's more disturbing, there is another knife that has miraculously appeared. I've never even seen it, never used it, and it's freaking useless. I live alone and there is no possibility of someone living in my basement or attic as I don't own either of those. It's so freaking weird. I want my knife back. Also. That's not the first incident of this kind in my life, but this time at least, I know for sure that I'm not going crazy. Case file number 363, written by Tangerine Sally. A shadow forming into an instrument of war. This took place when I was 12, in the early 90s. I have no explanation for what I saw. My parents were invited to have coffee at the home of some friends. My sister, 11, and I came along. This couple had two children our age, whom we knew since we were babies. They had a finished basement that had a kitchen and a sitting area, so the grown-ups were having a fun conversation down there. Us kids got bored after a while. This was before computers, iPads, etc. And it was already dark outside. My sister, Dee, said, Let's play hide and seek. Our friend, Sarah, had a younger sister who was six, so we were trying to find something fun for her to do as well. Sarah started counting to 50 downstairs in the living room. My sister, Sarah's sister, and I headed upstairs towards the bedrooms, hoping to find a good hiding spot. We went into their parents' bedroom and hid behind the bed while we faced the door. We were planning to duck and hide ourselves when Sarah came up the stairs. The room was pitch dark except for the street light that was directly outside. The light casted a shadow on the wall in front of us. That's when I saw an unusual shadow on the wall. The shadow resembled a black pistol. I said to the two girls with me, Do you see that weird shadow? I looked around, but I couldn't find anything in that room that could make that shape. I walked up to it. The shadow started to slowly move backwards into an open closet. It was no longer a shadow, but now looked like a black pistol pointed at us, but moved backwards into the closet. I got the impression right away that it didn't want to be discovered and was trying to hide. I saw it move forcefully backwards into some clothes. When it did this, the clothes moved violently as this thing hid. I asked, Did you see that? And both girls whispered yes. I almost had the nerve to go in and move everything to find it, but suddenly got creeped out and ran downstairs. We didn't even care that Sarah never found us, but we announced that we didn't want to play anymore. We went from energetic kids to very quiet for the rest of the stay. We didn't say anything to anyone, but I told my parents a year after because it always bothered me. It felt evil, and it had some intelligence. I've always wondered if that family ever saw it or if they had other experiences, but I've never heard anything about it. I don't know why we saw it, what it was doing there, and why it was shaped like a pistol. I was invited to their house when I was around 20. Sarah was getting married. Her mother wanted to show us the dress she bought for her wedding, but I couldn't bring myself to go back to the bedroom, so I stayed downstairs. Bonus file. Written by Gijitri, of Prisons and Shadows. A few months ago, my uncle invited me to go to a well-known paranormal hotspot with him and his group. 
I've always been open-minded about the paranormal as I've had other experiences with what I believe to be spirits or ghosts. The place in question is an old, out-of-use prison used to hold political prisoners, murderers, etc. Me and my uncle arrived first and so he thought he would show me around. We walked down every wing, long dark hallways leading from the main foyer, all with prison cells on each side of course. The least frightening experience was when I saw a dark figure standing there and I looked at my uncle and looked back and it was gone. This is when I realized my belief in the paranormal had been well placed. He then showed me to a room or cell. The reason I call it a room is because it was the most luxurious cell. It had comfortable pillows, a big soft mattress and a bookcase to top it all off. The very bookcase which, when slid over, leads to the room the prisoner would be hanged in. The noose came from the ceiling and a large glass area. The floor came down and led to the coffin room. Before my uncle showed me what was behind the bookcase, I saw a huge white flash come from the cracks behind the bookshelf. I get chills as I'm writing this. After my uncle opened the bookcase, I saw a large black figure peek over his shoulder. This terrified me. It seemed normal to him. Nowhere in this prison had good lighting, so when your eyes adjust to the dark, you can really see silhouettes in the dark. Under the prison, there is a long, dark tunnel which leads to the old courthouses across the road. As an initiation, they made me walk to the end of the tunnel with all the lights off, knock on the rusty metal door at the end and ask for, Sir, when I came within five feet of that door, I felt a horrible feeling, like something was waiting for me. I strongly hesitated, but I knocked on the door and asked for Sir. As I walked briskly back to the group, I heard them all exclaim, they said something walked back with me, a dark figure. I didn't believe them, until someone else did it, and I promise you, a large black figure came slowly from the wall and walked behind him. I thought because it was so dark, it was just another random person walking with them, until I remembered he walked down alone. Bonus 5, written by Julia Louis Dreypus. You know, maybe this ghost is just hungry. So, my boyfriend and I moved into a new apartment about two months ago. At first, it was all sunshine and glitter, but as time goes on, more and more crap is popping off and not in a good way. Whatever entity is here is ballsy and has become extremely active. For example, I was lying in bed alone trying to take a nap and the headboard started banging against the wall. Needless to say, I did not take a nap that afternoon. It's also always messing around in the kitchen. For example, moving pots and pans around to make noise. But today, I was in our bedroom and could hear pots and pans and silverware, etc. being thrown around. And when I finally had the nerve to look into the kitchen, there were pots, pans, plates, etc. everywhere and all the cabinet doors were open and there were snacks all over the counters too. And the sink water was running. So if anyone needs me, I'll be outside on my front porch waiting for my boyfriend to get home from work. Case file number 364. Written by Just Little Reed. So it appears this ghost really hates phones. Hi, this is my first post ever, but I just want someone to listen and help me come up with theories of what the hell I have experienced. Me and my friend were in her kitchen. She was making food and I was sitting at the table with a bowl of cereal when I noticed that her phone was really close to the edge of the table. I grabbed it and yelled, I will put your phone right here in the middle of the table. I put her phone in the middle of the wide and high table, which means that when we were sitting down, none of us could easily reach it. My friend sat down and we smiled at each other and started to eat. Just when I was about to say something, her phone flew across the room and into her bedroom and hit the wall with such force that it sounded like a big boom. She is shocked and scared by this, so my protective instincts kick in and I was like, it was just the wind, calm down. Look, I'll grab your phone and put it back in the same place and it will be all fine. She was terrified, and I just wanted her to calm down. It all happened so fast. So at this point, we were standing. She was in the corner, and I was at the table. I wanted to put the phone down at the exact same place, but it didn't even have time to touch the table when it flew out of my hand. It flew into the wall. The phone got cracked, and it almost hit my friend since she was standing there. If we weren't two who witnessed this, I would have thought I was hallucinating, but she recalled the event in the exact same way. We don't talk about it often because it makes her really scared. What happened? Case notes. This is just odd. Whoever this ghost was, the echo of this person, clear as day that they were a Luddite. They really hate technology. Case file number 365, written by Anonymous. 
when you meet your best friend from the past as yourself from the past. This was about 5 years or so ago. I was at the pool trying to get a few laps in but gave up as I kept bumping into people who were playing in the lapping lanes. It was a really hot day and very crowded so I just shrugged it off and let them. Usually I'd make a fuss and kick people out of the lapping lanes, unless they were lapping of course. So I just started walking down to the shallow end. Ahead, holding onto the pool's edge, I could see two teenage girls standing in the shallow end chatting to each other. The one facing me was a spit image of my best friend when I was about that age, teen years. I couldn't believe how much she looked like her as I walked by. When I was past the girls, I turned and got the shock of my life. The girl talking to the one who looked like my friend was me. She and I spent a lot of time at the pool when we were young. I even thought I recognized the bathers they were wearing. I got out of the pool and sat there, shaking for a minute. It had really gone through me like a shock of electricity. Then I got up and walked back to where I'd seen the girls, and they were gone. I spent another hour or so looking around in the pool, in the canteen and changing rooms, and on the grass, but I never saw them again. I'm still mind blown when I think about it. What do people think could possibly have happened? I know tan teenage girls can all look alike, but this was beyond a similarity. It still haunts me. Case file number 366 Written by Overall Resolve 4490. When your girlfriend comes home, but she never came home. I've been diving into high strangeness since I was little, but last year I read John Keel's Eighth Tower and my whole perspective changed. For the past three months or so, I've been pretty absorbed by all things strange. In the past, I was more focused on UFOs and alternate history, consciousness, and I've never been one to look into hauntings. But after reading Keel, I've started watching videos of stories and browsing relevant subreddits. It's become an interest of mine, but I will say that I have no desire to experience any ghost or poltergeist activity. So last night I was working outside on the patio while my girlfriend was at work. I had one of her dogs, Pyrenees, outside with me, and her other dog was inside with my two. It was about 7pm when I heard her pull up and lock the car. The dogs inside started doing what they normally do when she comes home and one of my dogs came to the patio door, wagging her tail and telling me to come inside to say hi. Since I was working and couldn't leave right then, I was going to wait for her on the patio. I heard the front door open and shut, normal front door closing sound, where the whole house shakes a little. My dog ran back towards the front door to greet my girlfriend, but then ran back to the patio door in the kitchen and was excitedly whining. Soon after, my dog inside and the Pyrenees outside started looking towards the laundry room attached to the kitchen. The lights were off in the kitchen and laundry room, so I turned them on with my phone. Nothing in the kitchen or laundry room. No cats, dogs, or girlfriend. Still, the Pyrenees stood and stared at the same spot for at least 30 seconds. While all of this is happening, I'm kind of annoyed. She didn't tell me she'd be home early, even though I was just texting with her, and I was in the middle of work and hadn't tidied up before she got back so my heart rate and blood pressure was elevated because of surprise and stress. Once I realized she didn't come home, I was scared someone else had gone in the house. I heard the freaking door shut. My house shook. The dogs heard it all, too. But after I checked my security logs, it was clear none of the doors had been opened and no one else was at my house. I had tried to tell my girlfriend about it, but it scared her and she forced me to explain it away. I said, maybe it was a subwoofer in someone's car that shook the house but I'm 100% positive that's not what it was. It's also worth noting that my driveway isn't near any others and no one lives in the house closest to mine. I have zero reasonable explanation for this. Honestly, I almost forgot about it, but figured I'd go ahead and write it down. Anyone else have a similar story? Or does anyone else experience something after spending a lot of time looking into strangeness? Edit. Another commenter mentioned a Wikipedia page that linked to this entry. In Finnish folklore, all places and things, and also human beings, have a haltia, a genius, guardian spirit of their own. An image, or doppelganger, or just an impression that goes ahead of a person, doing things the person in question later does. For example, people waiting at home might hear the door close or even see a shadow or a silhouette, only to realize that no one has arrived yet. Case file number 367, written by Two Way Mirror. A chilling account with multiple witnesses of a UFO in Ohio. On the evening of September 7th, 
2006. My friend Jen and I were driving home from a friend's house nearby, where the Big Ear Radio Observatory used to be. It was somewhere around 10 p.m. near the corner of Cheshire Road and Route 23 between Delaware, Ohio and Lewis Center, Ohio. We were driving down Route 23 heading south towards Lewis Center when Jen saw a bright light very distant in the sky. We both joked, saying, it's probably a UFO. So we keep driving and we eventually lose sight and forget about the distant object in the sky. Then, as we were coming over the precipice of the hill, just beyond where the golf course is now, where the telescope once stood, there was an enormous, glowing, football-shaped UFO hanging right above our heads, steadily moving over top of Route 23, heading towards Lewis Center. It was the most frightening and awe-inspiring thing I have ever witnessed. We stopped on the side of the highway and got out of the car. It was the largest thing I have ever seen. I felt like an ant beneath a giant glowing boot. The object looked like it was engulfed in an orangish, reddish plasma, almost like what the surface of the sun looks like from close up or space. It looked as though it had flames bubbling and churning within it. I tried to take a video with my Motorola Razr, but the phone just would not pick it up at all, even though it had just been working fine and had nearly a full charge. It slowly begins to back away from us a bit, and then begins floating towards the town of Lewis Center. We followed it back to Lewis Center where my friends and I watched it for nearly an hour, and eventually it began to gain altitude. Then in a dizzying display of lights and flashes, it blasted away in the blink of an eye, leaving behind a wispy blue slash teal vapor trail. I found out later that the Big Ear Radio Observatory in Delaware, Ohio was where they had received the WOW signal in 1977. This object took up a large portion of the visible sky as we came upon it. I am an airman. I have been trained to observe and identify aircraft. I would estimate the object to be the size of an NFL football stadium, just floating above the tree line slash highway and houses and buildings. The object was witnessed by at least five people other than myself. As it was gaining altitude, glowing bluish purple orbs started cascading out of the main football, cigar, shaped object one after the other. Each time one appeared, the momentum of which they resolved around the main object intensified until all I could see was a spinning blue glow around the main football object. Then in the blink of an eye it shot off into a flash of light in front of it, like the Enterprise going to warp speed leaving only a bluish trailing haze behind it. The whole experience was the most profound thing to have ever happened to me in my lifetime up until that point. Edit. There is one thing that I left out. An E-3 Sentry aircraft immediately flew into the area after the encounter, at a very low altitude. It was so low that I could easily make out exactly what type of plane it was in the black of night. I also saw it in the sky around Lewis Center for the next few days after the encounter. It was so close I could read the US Air Force on the side of the aircraft. Case file number 368, written by Trigger Happy 66 a case of contact lens asymmetry. I need to give some context first. I have contact lenses for my eyes that are daily disposable. Recently, I had gone through my stack, so I ordered new ones and got exactly four boxes, two for each eye, two times 90 days worth of lenses. Now I recently got a room because I've gone to college, so logically, I bought two boxes there and left two for home. This week I've been home since Thursday, and I've used the lenses, I was happy to finally get rid of my glasses again, and so the two boxes were open. Now, another important detail is that my eyes have different prescriptions, so I always get one lens from each box every time. So with that information, I present the most absurd thing ever. This morning, I went to get my lenses for the day, and took one from the left box for my left eye. Then, I went to get one from my right eye, but then noticed that the box was sealed shut. I immediately froze and got an intense feeling of confusion. With my mouth open, I spinned the box around and checked if it was actually completely closed. And yes, even though I had been taking lenses from it for the last couple of days, the box appeared brand new and unopened. After this shock, I tore the carton open and got my lens, and also noticed that it was completely full. Please, for the love of God that I don't even believe in, someone give me a logical explanation for this, or I'll lose my mind. Case file number 369, written by Bonus Minutes. A mysterious road, elevated, that did not exist. Back when I was in college, probably 2012-2013, I experienced something weird with my friend. 
I went to a community college in New Jersey and had met a lot of friends. One night, two guys that I didn't know super well, but seemed cool, wanted to chill. I'll call them Rourke and Eric. I drove the three of us to Eric's house for video games, movies, and for Rourke and I to spend the night. We were having fun, but around 2am, Eric's dad inexplicably just said that Rourke and I couldn't spend the night. This was annoying because my place was at least 45 minutes away and I would need to drive Rourke home first, wherever that was. This part of the state is very rural, with a bunch of thick forest roads and farmland, so everything is far apart there. So begrudgingly, Rourke and I got into my car, and since Eric guided us to his place earlier, and neither Rourke or I knew where we were, I would need to GPS to his house. At the time, I still had a slider phone, not a smartphone, so I used one of those old TomTom Tom GPS units. We started on our way, following the GPS instructions through the wooded roads, making small talk and whatnot. Before long, we ended up on a wooded road that the GPS didn't have a name for. The space for the road name was just blank, which I had never seen before. Less than a minute after we got on the road, the GPS lost its signal. I didn't think much of it and just continued, figuring it would come back. The road started off normal and unremarkable, but it gradually got steeper and steeper downhill. Rourke and I commented on it, but brushed it off. However, as the minutes passed, the road got more and more simple. Eventually there were no guardrails, then it stopped having streetlights, then it became a dirt road with no markings, then it narrowed for just enough space for one car, one way. The forest on either side was hugging us, and aside from the dirt road, there was no signs of human influence. It's also worth noting that there was never an intersecting road to turn onto. It was a lone road. We also never saw another car. Rourke and I were kind of nervously laughing about it, trying not to freak out. The decline had become very steep, and it was almost a perfectly straight road. I had considered trying to turn around, but at that point the road was too narrow to turn around, and it would have been awful for my car to drive back up something so steep for so long. So we just descended into the darkness, only able to see what my headlights showed. All in all, we probably went down for 15 to 20 minutes, and we were going decently fast. I doubt we went below 20 miles per hour, much faster a lot of the time so that I wasn't killing my brake pads. I feel as though we should have easily passed sea level. Eventually the road evened out, guardrails and streetlights came back, the GPS signal returned, and we just ended up on some side road like 2 minutes from Rourke's place. He insists that the road had never been there and there was no mountain near his place for us to have descended. I ended up just crashing at Rourke's place. The next day I drove back the way I came and could not find the strange road, nor could I find any road that was remarkably elevated. Case file number 370, written by Kami Goth Girlfriend. It's awkward when people stare at you, especially when it lasts for 5 minutes. A couple of days ago I was leaving my apartment to go to dinner with my parents. I stepped out of the front door and locked the door behind me, but caught a glimpse of something in the corner of my eye. I turn my head to face the apartment complex across from my building and there are two children, a girl maybe 6 and a boy maybe 4, standing completely still on the stairs and staring at me. No parents in sight. It immediately freaked me out, but I waved because I figured they were just nosy kids who liked to stare, but they didn't wave back or move at all. I turn my head to walk away and head to the stairs in my building and I catch a glimpse of another person. A woman on her third floor porch, standing and facing me, staring and unmoving just like the children were. Skeeved me out really badly so I moved fast to the stairs to get to my car and when I got down the stairs to the sidewalk of the parking lot, there was a red car pulling out of its space to drive off. As soon as I look at the driver, he stops in his tracks, right in the middle of the road thingy, and he stares at me. Then after a pause and me standing there in fear, he backed up into his spot and sat there and watched me as I walked to my car. I'm thoroughly frightened at this point and I jump in my car and lock it immediately, crank it and take a deep breath. I look up from the wheel and across the sidewalk and grass in front of me, there is a woman pushing her toddler on her cart, except they are not moving and they're both staring at me through my windshield. I start to panic a little and I text my roommates and tell them what's happening and that I'm scared and when I look back up from my phone, everyone and everything is moving again like normal. The lady with the toddler shyly waves at me because I'm staring at her in fear. The guy in the red car pulls back out of the spot and drives away. 
Everything just paused and focused on me for less than 5 minutes and it was horrifying and I do not know how to explain it. I was getting worried I had something weird on me or I was falsely accused of something. It was really freaky and I hope to not experience it again. Case notes. I was having a symmetry thought here. What if whatever caused this made you appear to them as you staring at them? Like you were the one tranced out, to them they were normal, and to everyone in this scenario everyone else seemed weird but to them they were acting normal. Something sort of possessed you all in that area. I don't know if it was a spirit or some phenomena in that area that just made everyone go into a weird trance, not realizing what they were doing or misperceiving what other people were doing. I've never heard of this effect outside of hauntings but then it's in a limited capacity and it would happen again because you're possessed. That's not the vibe I get here, so there's one element that fits there but everything else doesn't. Very cool but also freaky of course. Case file number 371, written by Dumb Spyro Spiro. When frames skip a beat in real life. I'm currently on a metro bus heading home, sitting about dead center of the vehicle, so four rows back from the front entrance and a driver with the automated fare collector next to him. Since the start of the route I was the only person riding and it stayed that way until we got closer to the city and a woman boarded. I was just kinda in my own little world, listening to music on my headphones but for whatever reason I started watching her fiddling with the bill acceptor, trying to get it to accept crinkled dollars. She struggles for some time and finally gets her fare in. Then she turns my way to walk down the center aisle towards the seats. This is when it gets weird. She likes to phase forward a good 10 steps down the aisle to about where I'm seated. I don't mean she moved super fast or took a giant step or she somehow looked closer than she was. I mean, one second, she's at the front of the bus and the next, she's halfway down the aisle of the bus. This woman moved half an entire bus length in less than a second. If it were a film, it would look like a handful of frames were cut out and the reel spiced back together. After that, she just casually continued to the back of the bus. I wasn't sleepy like that, hell, I don't think I even blinked. Super weird event in an otherwise boring bus ride. Bonus file, written by the freshest scone, a white hat luminescent figure moving in slow motion. I don't believe in ghosts or anything paranormal, I'm not religious or spiritual, and just generally don't think anything of the sort exists. But tonight I encountered something that genuinely terrified me and I can't form any sort of logical explanation for it. So I have a dog and I almost always walk her at night due to my schedule. I'm currently living with my parents who live in a very upscale private community, one which I'm extremely familiar with and I've walked hundreds of times before, both during the day and night. It's a very safe place and I never feel any sort of risk walking at night aside from visibility to passing cars, for which I wear reflective armbands. Tonight I was taking my dog on her daily walk and we crossed a road that led from one section of the subdivision to another. While entering this next section, I noticed up ahead about 80 to 100 meters a figure moving down the road across from the direction I was going. The best way I can describe it is if a person was wearing a slightly luminescent white hat skipping down the street. The problem is, first of all, there wasn't enough light to get a clear view of whatever I saw. I could definitely see the light that appeared to be a hat if it was a person wearing one, but not enough to discern anything more. And the most disconcerting thing was that even if the person was wearing a light hat skipping down the street, they would have been moving in slow motion, almost suspended in air between jumps. There was also no sound either. After seeing this, I yelled out several times asking if there was anyone there and I didn't get any response. At that point, I noticed that my dog was whimpering and had her tail between her legs. For me, this was the scariest part because I've never seen her act like that in any situation ever. If she sees another person while we're out walking, she'll get excited and pull on a leash wanting to go up and say hi. If there's another dog or animal she's unsure of, she'll bark and start running in circles around me. I have never under any circumstances seen her act scared and start whimpering. That was enough to make me go nope and turn the hell around. Like I said, I don't have any belief in anything paranormal, but I had no intention of messing around with whatever the hell I had just encountered. So we turned around and finished our walk. I admittedly glanced behind frequently, making sure there wasn't anyone following. We're now home safe, which leads up to me typing this right now. 
I have never experienced something like that, and I have no idea what to think. Rashly, I think it would be more likely I hallucinated or something, rather than it being anything paranormal. But the thing that bugs me the most is my dog's extremely uncharacteristic reaction. If I had been seeing things, then why would she have behaved in a way she never had before? Just wanted to share my story here, and hopefully I don't sound insane. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, and leave any thoughts you might have down below. I always like knowing what you guys think too.